oil prices have collapsed. The International Energy Agency says we're drowning in crude, which raises the question, how can those in the business community keep their heads above water? We assembled a top cast of those from the oil sector to get their opinions. It's nice to have everybody back for the uh, annual CNN Roundtable. If I was going to ask you that we'd be testing $27 a barrel for the benchmark Brent, uh, you probably would have thought I would, uh, was drinking the wrong stuff. Tell us the surprise you have at the price that we're seeing today, and how do you plan for the future if prices are going to be going even lower than we see today, Mr. President? Well, it's difficult to expect the price going lower, but uh, having this situation today, we will not be surprised if it happens. Of course, we were not prepared for that. We in Azerbaijan were preparing ourselves for so-called post-oil era in about 20 years from now. Therefore, for us, it was a surprise. And at the same time, it was a stress for our economy. If prices continue to be low, we will be able to withstand it for a long, long time. Obviously, we don't hope for that, but we're uh, prepared for it. We have the lowest cost production uh, in the planet by uh, a big margin from our next uh, competitors. This is a position that we've earned over uh, a long time, and we've earned it by investing, by being uh, true to our principles, and by uh, continuing to be committed to our c consumers, and we're not going to leave that position for others. I think it was Royal Dutch Shell in about 1950, 15 was asked, uh, what's the right price of oil? And he said, it's whatever it fetches in the marketplace. And so if this is the marketplace is saying this, but there is an oversupply and the question of, of, of demand that's overhanging at the same time. So there's two things coming together. And as you suggested, this is an unusual situation because uh, the price of oil is walking arm in arm with the questions about the Chinese economy. The import is still very strong on the oil side, uh, but the demand is a bit weak. I think there's some are uh, going to the strategic reserve. Uh, but the, what made China so interesting, I think two reasons. One, China is big, right? As everybody knows that. The other one is dynamic. Uh, it it comes up very quickly and also goes down very quickly. So, and that created a huge impact on the international markets. Well, we're the biggest exporter of crude oil uh, to China. We also have investments in China, refining and marketing. And there is a silver lining to the China story in that as they shift to a consumer-led economy and as more of the Chinese people move into the middle class and they start consuming more, uh, petroleum products tend uh, to gain. The price itself is irrational, if you ask me, because uh, prices are supposed to be set by the marginal barrel. The marginal barrel is certainly way higher than $30 a barrel. What do you, would you suggest as an average price for 2016, knowing the dislocation we see today, sir? I would not uh, risk my reputation of <laughs> and, and, and give a price. I do feel, though, that we are, we, we are, the market has overshot on the, on, on, on the low side and that it's inevitable to start turning up. Uh, we don't we have a bit of reserves, but we don't have as much as we should. Uh, infrastructure hasn't been very well developed, so this does hit us quite hard. But we, we're amongst those who are very optimistic that 2016 will end ultimately a better price for oil. Okay, you think it's going to be a better price. What drives that a, a better price? Is this the washout in the U.S. shale well, uh, well, production or the higher cost projects being canceled as uh, Kareel was suggesting? Definitely U.S. shale uh, is key. Uh, and if you look at the numbers that are coming off there, um, you look at a place like Texas, for example, and what impact this is having, you begin to see that there's a lot of drop off in terms of production there. At the end of the day, there must be a bottom line point at which production no longer makes sense for them. Uh, for some, you can survive at $20. For some, you can survive at 10 But very many are going to start dropping off, off the ball very, very rapidly. Russia has taken a very distinctive view here, try to produce as much as possible, nearly 11 million barrels a day in December. Uh, you're fighting for market share as a country. I know you run the sovereign fund here. What is the strategy to go all out to get what you can in this sort of price climate? Well, first of all, I think we are not the only ones. Uh, obviously, other players are going very much for the market share. And when lots of people go for market share, you have decline in the price which uh, we are seeing. Every day we think this is a bottom, and then, <laughs> you know, we see a new price for oil. And uh, 
uh, frankly speaking, this is already a little bit exhausting, also from psychological point of view.